want to inject here you can inject and it will start executing in your current DOM structure. So, this is how interestingly you can identify DOM and then try to exploit. So, for example, if I am already logging into the system here and then if I do the same call here alert document dot string here then you can see we are going to get the access to this and we actually end up getting the the pop up with the with the cookie. So, essentially you can start retrieving these values on a DOM based call. Now, as you can see there is no filter or anything is going to protect here. You do not have like your if you have a server side filter for example, less than greater than persistent known persistent uh, accesses that is not going to work here. You need some a uh, different kind of mechanism where some kind of a filtering should happen at the DOM level on the client side. Uh, so, this is how uh, one kind of a DOM based call will work. A second is a is a pretty simple where attacker posts something on the news site for example, it is controlled by a third party. So, attacker will post a news or a document or well weather or etcetera somewhere and that particular piece of information will tunnel through your application and hit to your DOM and that raw stream which is coming is not validated, it is not trusted one, it comes you take the stream, DOM will take the stream and we will do a eval and as soon as the eval occurs it will going to do a cross site scripting here. So, for example, once HTTP ready states the callback will go for you say ok uh, var p equal to eval response and then you do document dot write document dot write. Now, in the this particular response if you have a live script there then that particular script is going to get executed on the DOM. So, this is how uh, DOM based cross site scripting will work. So, you can pollute this different streams essentially once attacker get a point where this kind of a pollution is possible it will say post XML, JS object, JS array, JS script, JSON etcetera. Uh, web client will make a call to your 2.0 application, 2.0 application invoke a proxy because it uh, can't bypass SOP. So, web client directly cannot make call to the stream. Uh, so, the proxy will go grab that stream and tunnel that stream into the web client and web client will do a stream in, do eval and then cross site scripted. And there is bunch of calls out there. So, it is when you do a analysis of a JavaScript, you need to do document dot write, document dot write ln, body, inner HTML, attach event, create, exact command, body. This is a very small list, there is a large uh, list out there. So, depending on how uh, how a developer had developed this application, for example, you take something and put it into document dot write. Now, as soon as it goes into a document dot write and you have a actual script going there, it is going to be going to get executed on the on the browser's DOM. So, this is how the various different calls these exploit exploitable calls uh, from a DOM can be done. So, this is a very simple call for example, if we take uh, this is a page where we click a link over here. So, as soon as we click a link we get cross site scripted because the tunnel the information which is coming through third party has this JSON where someone has injected a script tag into my JSON and if I look at the actual source code how this page is getting rendered here through the DOM. Then you can see over here we are making a get JSON profile call and then we are doing eval and then as soon as we do document dot write document dot write this particular call will get successfully in. Uh, what you can do is there is a little ruby kit which we posted called scan web 2.0. So, if you want to use that essentially or the essentially this is for from the XML. So, the same call uh, which is coming through the XML where we are doing a first name and last name and then we are doing a uh, doing eval or we are injecting the new content into our uh, existing DOM. So, you can see a last name someone has injected a script here. So, this is a interesting way a third party stream be it a XML be it a JSON coming will cause a crash or a cro cause a cross site uh, scripting which is a DOM driven over here. Uh, and then you can actually scan the site. Say, for example, you have a target application over here. You can scan that particular site over here. Uh, say, for example, if we use uh, something called scan web 2.0. So, what I am doing here is a, is a script called scan ajax.rb where I define all the URLs which I want to scan. And there is no 
there is no yes or no here. It's a, it's a more on the static analysis or code analysis which one needs to perform. You, you can't say whether this is a DOM based cross site scripting or not. So what we are doing over here is we are looking for uh, certain patterns. We say okay, show me all the functions. So it will show you all the functions and then say okay, show me all the XHR calls. So these are the all XHR call and then we say okay, show me, show me eval, show me document dot write and then we try to correlate whether the response coming is going into eval or response coming going into document dot write or stuff like that. Okay, so this is the second category of uh, DOM based cross site scripting here. Uh, the third is very interesting where you have a direct AJAX call. So uh, you have an AJAX function which is making a back end call. Uh, back end call would return a JSON stream or anything else and then it get injected into DOM. This is how the application is designed. In some libraries, their content type would allow them to load directly into the browser. Say, for example, you are sending XML content. A server is a library on a server side is sending XML content, but when you look at the content type, it's a text HTML, uh, or it is sending JSON, and it's not text JSON, but it is text HTML. So, if that that direct stream will come and hit to the to the browser, then it's going to get executed. Uh, so in that case, uh, it's essentially a bypassing DOM and you can inject uh, the content directly uh, into the browser. So you can send that particular link to anyone and then that guy will click the link, JSON will come translated as a text HTML and get executed. So for example, over here, we have a search functionality here. Now when you do a search, you can see these kind of a call going at the back end. This is a call where say search dot do parameter is some kind of a, a JSON stream which is going as a parameter. So we take this location and make a direct call. So now we are completely bypassing the whole GUI here and we say we want to make a direct call here. Now instead of that if we put a text and script alert alert we get an injection point here. So this is where we are bypassing DOM. Uh, we say, okay, these are the backend calls. Now I have like all the backend calls. So rather than going through the application, I'm saying, what if I do a direct interaction with the call and then uh, I inject some content into JSON and expecting HTML is coming back or JSON is coming back. This is something which you can, you can uh, essentially do a trial and error and figure that out. Uh, so what you can do over here is, for example, there is a nice utility by Google called Rat Proxy. Uh, so if you do start a rat proxy and then uh, you pass all your traffic uh, through rat proxy, then rat proxy will, will figure out that what kind of a content mismatch you have over here, the content type mismatch you have over here. So I'm clicking all the links, so the whole traffic is going to get generated at the back end and rat proxy will, will create a report for me. So then we go back over here, the proxy was started, now I close the proxy and say okay, generate a report, whatever a log you have created so far. So it has all requests and responses over here. So now red proxy will generate a HTML page, a nice little HTML page as a report. And then you can see over here, for example, it has like type is text plain, detected is application X JavaScript or over here text plain and application X JavaScript. So then you can identify that, okay, server is sending me JSON, but if I look at his content type, it's something else. So this is one of the interesting area where we are seeing a lot of, uh, lot of opening and we are reporting this vulnerabilities to, to the clients. Uh, so that's, and some of the libraries are actually not, not uh, doing this as well. So say for example, you are sending a JSON, but if you say text plain as a content type, library will go ahead and process JSON jolly well. We'll see that in when we come to the CSRF with DOM-based CSRF. Uh, so in nutshell, uh, we see we have covered three types of uh, DOM-based cross-site scripting methods, uh, but it is very common nowadays. Other instances are also possible like callback direct, directed to DOM, a uh, little complex here. Uh, HTML5 coming up with a lot of different uh, DOM attributes, uh, autofocus, for, uh, form action, on form inputs, etc. You have a third party JavaScript processing, inner HTML calls, and many other ways. So essentially DOM based cross site scripting is a one type of uh, DOM attack. Now second interesting vector is uh, accessing information from the DOM. 
so now what we have over here is a application run with a rich DOM. So when you load the application, it loads a lot of different global variables. Now say for example, you go ahead and uh, go ahead and log in into the Google and try to see what kind of a global variables uh, which are loaded in the browser. And these global variables are essentially ex uh, uh, available throughout the application. So you have a DOM based cross site scripting and then you can start accessing these global variables depending on where your call is going. So one area is you can start extracting these globals. Uh, second is it has a sensitive information on the variables, maybe a username, passwords, maybe uh, it has uh, session IDs, UIDs, etc. Uh, it can be retrieved with access and HTTP request response are going. So you have a JavaScript XHR going, so you can actually steal uh, XHR calls as well. So for example, here is a little AJAX call which say, okay, get login. So there is a call called get login and then it is doing something where it's okay, uh, this is my username, take it from here, take it my password, uh, open an XHR object and then you say, okay, tamp equal to login dot do user equal to user, password equal to pass and then make a get or a post, whatever request you want to post. When a callback comes, you are, say for example, you are authenticated, so session cookie will set and then you say, okay, if the guy is authenticated, you say document dot get element by ID main. So in my browser, wherever the area called main defined, load that response right there. Now in this particular source code, you can see very casual use of TAMP here, this, very, this particular variable. There is no var in front. So this, this little variable over here is actually become a global variable. So now the TAMP variable can be accessed uh, through cross-site scripting. It is out of the function access is possible. So if, for example, if we go ahead and start stealing these variables, so say for example, you can start stealing user password, you can start stealing response tokens, business information can be uh, extracted, you can actually uh, use a HTTP request and response stealing, you can create a dummy XHR object. Uh, so a lot of exploitation possibility right there. So what we have a, we have a little tool or utility created called DOM Tracer. So we try to use that uh, for this analysis. Okay, so DOM Tracer is essentially a Firefox plugin uh, which will show us uh, the JavaScript execution here. So say for example, this is, a, uh, this is a sample page which we have over here. And we say, okay, uh, click this link. So you can, when, you, when I click this link, as you can see, uh, actual post request where JSON will go and I get a JSON back and then it's get loaded in my browser. Now one of the problem is that with the 2.0 application, when you load the 2.0 application, uh, uh, what is going to happen is it's going to load 30 files, 30 JS files for example. And when you click one particular link, uh, five functions from application of uh, .js, foo.js, three function from b.js and five function from c.js are going to get executed. So what we want to look at is when I fire an event, I want to see all lines which are executed on the JavaScript so I can do the analysis on it. So this is a DOM tracer is a little utility which will do this for us. So it is a xpcom object which is wrapped around. So we are extracting the debug information out uh, from it. So when we start a trace and now we say, okay, now click a link. So as soon as we click the link, whatever functions are executed, you can see over here. Okay, catalog.aspx, line number 92, the function, this particular function was there, it is executed. So now you can start seeing all DOM manipulations in a JavaScript. For example, this is a document.get element is changed. Here you can see eval functions. Here is a JSON stream comes back, etc. So this is the second tool which we, we, we are posted on the net now, which you can use to leverage uh, the analysis of a JavaScript. So you don't have to analyze, say for example, a particular application has 35 JavaScript coming, you don't have to analyze all 35. When you make a call, when you, you're interested, if I, uh, for example, if I are doing the submit button, I put on my login and password, what JavaScript is going to get executed? You can see it over here. Uh, so say for example, we analyze one of the script. Let's try this. So over here we are saying, say, okay, I have a login button over here and I say, okay, start DOM tracer. So we start DOM tracer here and say, okay, start trace calls. And we say Shriraj, Shriraj username and password. We pass on that. And now we can see what has happened at the back end. The browser has, first it has called a function called get login. 
the function get login has been called these are the lines which were extracted or executed so the as i saw shown you that and then you have a tamp function where username and password is taken and then some kind of a callback game back and the xml http response has been posted back over here this is a single dom application so now pretty much anywhere you find a cross site scripting uh, you can do alert tamp here for example so we did a alert tamp here and you can see the username and password pops up. So we extracted that variable here. Now say for example, we do image src foo on error alert temp variable. So now we know that there is a temp variable which is of our interest and we try to extract that here. So as soon as we do this, you can see, I can see the username and passwords over here. So this is a way how if you analyze the application, if you see all the global variables, you can 